This video is sponsored by Avail. Are you a HGV driver looking for a job? If so, then create and log into the Avail app and start looking for work. Want to know more? Then download the Avail app today. Good morning, everybody. Yes, that's right. It is 3.24 in the morning. It's an early start today. We've got to get to the yard. Um, we're aiming to leave the yard by about four o'clock in this morning. We've got to go to Warrington. Early start. <laughs> Let's go to the yard. Yeah. Should be illegal. Too early. Right, 11.40. We're in the yard car park. Let's go and get it. Okay, here we are in the truck. Well, sorry, outside the truck, I should say. We're just doing some daily checks. Make sure everything's okay. I'll put the phone down in a minute and do it properly, but just doing a, a primitive daily check. For example, the kingpin's not been... Oh, sorry, the dog clip has not been put in. Someone else hitched up to this trailer. And... Uh, Hasn't put the dog clip in, so I better do that before I forget. If whoever hits this trailer happens to be watching, I leave it in my side locker. Basically, it's come off. It doesn't stay attached, so uh, rather than lose it, I uh, put it in the side locker. Okay, can't see it, it's a bit dark, but the dog clip is now in, which means that won't come out. So. That's that done. So yeah, we're just gonna go around and check the rest of the trailer. This is what we've got on. We've got a load of timber, as you can see. We're going to Warrington. Warrington area, it's gonna, I think it's Goldbourne, I think. We're all strapped up. Dobbs are good and... Yeah, right, we're just gonna do some more checks and then uh, we'll make our way there. Okay, right, we're back in the truck. Uh, I'm not using cinematic mode. I'm not sure if this video is going out before or after the next one. By which I mean, I've already recorded one before this, but I don't know whether this is going out before or after. I've used cinema, cinematic mode in that one. Uh, apologies for the last video that went live with the horrible saturation colours. Um, that itself was the cinematic mode. Cinematic, cinematic mode was the blurring of the background. The um, saturation of the colours was a rendering issue. Um, I hired an editor to edit that video and some for some reason i don't know what software he was using but for some reason it changed the codex within the file i think when he sent the edited video back to me it wasn't quite how i wanted it and i could already tell straight away that the quality of the video was slightly different than to the original clip uh, it already lost some quality but for some reason whenever i re-rendered it it would make it like twice as worse and um, it would make the white balance go massively high. I actually uploaded that video once. It went massively high with the white balance. I hadn't noticed until people said. So I took it down and I managed to mess around with some settings to, to bring the white balance down. But what I didn't realize is that it also made things like pink and my lips look like I was wearing lipstick. Saturation went right up. So I've asked my editor on the next video. I, I'm not, I don't know whether he's doing this one or not. I don't know yet. But on the video, the next video, he's got he's got another chance to upload to edit a video, see if it's any good, and uh, we'll go from there. But my apologies, it's not up to my my standard, basically. And um, yeah, I don't want to be uploading any more content like that. That's for sure. Anyway, we need to go because we've got to be there for seven. I've started early enough to get there for seven, but we do have a problem. Yeah, so we are going to be there for seven. Well, we would have been, but I think someone's used my truck over the weekend and didn't fill it with fuel so yeah so now now we've got to stop for fuel i knew that we had maybe a quarter of a tank that which to be fair it probably wouldn't have got us all the way there anyway we would have had to stop for fuel but i i need to stop for fuel a lot sooner than i thought we ain't going to get far with that so i'm going to crack on um i'll see you in a little while it should be lighter and um should be gopro footage as well so i'll see you in a bit Right, we've stopped at the uh, services on the side of the A417. Get some fuel because the lights just come on. 
get some fuel. We've got to use BP, so this is the only one. Yeah, so the fuel lights just come on and uh, when empty, that'll last maybe an hour. I'm fully loaded, so it's not gonna last long. The next BP garage from where I am is um, Strentrum Services. I'm not gonna make Strentrum, so it'll have to be this BP garage. Just a little bit of a hassle to get to this one. You've got to come off the 417, go turn left, then turn right down almost an old country lane, go under a bridge, turn left it's sort of it is just off the 417 but it's also quite awkward to get to when you're a large lorry um, and I don't know if you can see but to get out to go north we've got to go right it's quite a tight right to get out if you're on that pump there next to me you wouldn't make it and then you've got to go the go south turn around and then go north but we should be all right we'll take it nice and wide and we should be should be just about all right but yeah we're going to fill it with fuel it's going to take Probably a good 400 litres. There you go, a good 400 litres. That's the fuel. Do you know what, considering, considering it's half past four, um, it's actually quite warm, which is weird, because I'm going, whoo, whoo, it looks cold, but it's not, I'm in shorts. <laughs> I'm in shorts. It's not that bad today, it's quite nice. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Right, you join me about a mile away now from where we need to be. It's very foggy out, as you can see. Very foggy. It was a little bit foggy at Birdlip Hill back in Gloucester. And uh, most of the way here has actually been okay. But now it's foggy again. Give way to the right, nothing coming, all clear. Lovely. So yes, we've been driving for three hours and ten minutes. Um, well, since we left the yard anyway, we did stop for fuel about 20 minutes up the road, but the rest of it has been non-stop driving. Uh, we were asked to get here for 7am, admittedly it's, it's like, well, it's quarter past seven. So, um, yeah, but that's because we had to stop and get fuel. If we didn't have to get fuel, then we wouldn't have, uh, well, we would have been turning up at 7am. But never mind, it is what it is. Um, coming up, we've got, uh, a relatively tight left-hand turn. We need to use not only the other side of the road opposite us, but also the other side of the road on the left to make the corner. And it's a blind corner. You can't see what's coming around. It can sometimes be quite tricky if it's uh, if it's busy. It's literally just up here. It's left at these traffic lights. See where that red car's coming out? That red car's coming here, but I need to be where he is to make the corner. And we've got vehicles coming down towards us as well, and I need to be on the right-hand side of the road to make it. Literally won't make it, otherwise. So we're just waiting for one of these cars to uh, let us out, hopefully. No, no. Now we've got this red car coming down. We can't, we can't go now until that car comes. Okay, they've spotted they want to come down. They're reversing back. That's good. And this blue car's letting me go. Like I said, it's a bit awkward. Luckily, the cars have stopped and moved back for me. Brilliant. Getting back out is fine. Okay, let's squeeze between these two cars, shall we? loads of room so yeah it could be a bit awkward coming in that way um because just because of the road's a bit tight really but it's all right it's not hard to do you just you just gotta be patient luckily it's not too busy if we come here any later it could uh, like rush our traffic it'd be a lot harder you can go down like one more junction and then um then turn left you end up going through the housing estate which i have done before you can get through that way if you have to um, so that wouldn't be the end of the world. I can't go until these cars go. Okay, van is stopping for me. Oh, 
I was waiting for the van to go, but never mind. And yeah, we just gone down here and it's on the left hand side. Just uh, before or after the priority, I can't remember, I think it's just after. No, it's just before. And then we go on down here. Where it's also a bit tight. <laughs> Don't normally have cars parked on the corner, I don't think. Anyway, we are here. We are here. So we're gonna drive on in. I don't want to show too much inside because I don't like doing that in case the places I own uh, I'm at don't like it. So uh, I'm gonna go and uh, I will see you in a second. There's a truck behind me, he's got his bloody night gear on. <laughs> it's not even that cold. Mind you, according to my watch, it is six degrees, so. It's not exactly summer, but I'm in shorts still, living my best life. Anyway, we are all undone in terms of straps. All straps are taken off, so that's good. We've just spent the last five minutes swapping around the ratchets and the straps. Whoever had this trailer before me had, uh, you might have seen it this morning actually, um, all the ratchets were on the driver's side whoever had this trailer before me. So what I've done is I've swapped it all around. So now all the ratchets are on the passenger side on the trailer and all the straps on the driver's side. So I can throw straps over from the driver's side, do them up on the passenger side. And if, if one were to come loose, I could pull over in a hard shoulder, if there is a hard shoulder, and I could do it up on the passenger side, not next to a live lane. It's just, just about being a little bit safe. Anyway, I uh, just found out what we're doing next. It's a, another boot to stains run with mesh i swear to god we're doing these like twice a week at the moment it's uh it's a very common run that i've been doing um if we're lucky we get it off today but we might not be able to get it off depends how long we're here for what time we get to boot or what time they load us till if we're not out of there by 12 then um chance i won't be delivered today he'll be delivered in the morning which would be good for us because it means an earlier finish but obviously, I'll try my best to get off. So yeah, we're back in the truck now. We're just going to put the destination in where we're going. So our end destination is Staines, which is there. But first, we need to go to Liverpool. Bootle. It's only around the corner. There we go. There we go, so it's 42 minutes to Bootle, and then arrive at your destination at about four hours from Bootle down. Sometimes it can take longer, and sometimes you've got to stop and have a break. So we're looking at 20 to 1 now, but we still need to be tipped here, and we still need to be loaded there in Bootle. Okay, we are tipped. We've actually been here longer than expected, to be honest with you. We turned up, I think it was like quarter past seven we turned up, and... Uh, well, it's 20 to 9 now. We've been here uh, quite a while. This junction's horrible because cars come around this corner, this left corner, so quick. And then it's such a sharp exit as well to get out. Got to mind the tyres. There we go. You might have just seen it there, cars just come around the corner quite fast. They have to slow down. But yeah, no, so uh, quarter past seven, it's nearly, nearly quarter nine. So we've been here almost an hour and a half. Um, so yeah, it's quite a long time actually. Normally, you know, we're not actually here that long, so years. Anyway, so uh, as I alluded to earlier, we do know where we are going next. We are going to High Ten in Staines. It's a run that we, we do very often. Um, sorry, we're going to High Ten and Bootle, sorry, and we're delivering that to High Ten in Staines, a run that we do very, very often. Um, Hopefully we can get it delivered today. I have just rechecked the paperwork. It does actually say delivery is due tomorrow, but if we can get it off today, we will. Um, it's Yeah, it's touch and go. Like I said, we need to get a break in as well at some point, so we'll see what we can do later on today. We will just uh, we'll go as far as we can. But yeah, I just, I just wanted to take this opportunity to apologize once again. Um, 
my last video that I uploaded with regards to the HGV crashing into the car. Um, yeah, the video quality on that was just shocking. It's not what I expect. And, um, you know, you probably could argue why did I just take the video down, but I paid someone money to edit it for me, so I don't want to just not upload it. If I, if I edited it myself, then I probably would have, um, well, I wouldn't have had the issue to watch me. <laughs> I wouldn't have had the issue at all, so I wouldn't have needed to, uh, to take it down. But because I paid someone to make the video for me, uh, it's a bit of a waste of money, isn't it, if I um, if I remove the video. So, yeah, it's not it's not necessarily anything that the editor did wrong. There were stuff there was stuff wrong with it that I had to sort out. For example, audio. This microphone is a dual microphone, records in both left channel and right channel, and it was only in one channel. So I had to. A, edit that, and B, there's a couple of other bits I wanted to just cut out, uh, and the ending was not quite right. So I edited all of that together and uh, re rendered it, and then, yeah, found out I had all the issues. Turns out, whatever software he was using, it must encode it in something which my software doesn't like. So when it re renders, it just messes everything up. So, lesson is learnt. The editor is editing another video. I don't know whether he's editing this one or whether I am. <laughs> so, I don't know yet, but he does have another one to edit, and I have asked him to use the same software that I'm using. So, should I have to re edit anything that he has done, hopefully there won't be an issue, and then hopefully he can edit this one as well. So, Yes, if you're watching this, editor, um, thank you. I do appreciate all the hard work that you put into it. Um, I do. Don't, don't think I don't appreciate you. I do, but at the end of the day, it does have to be right. It does have to be right. Anyway, we're going to crack on. I just wanted to apologise to you once again, viewers, for, um, for the video quality. Hopefully, this one is a lot better, and the one prior as well. And uh, I've taken your advice on board and I won't be filming in cinematic mode. Although, I do think a lot of you thought cinematic mode was the increase of, in saturation. And it's not, it was just the blurry backgrounds. But I'm not going to film in cinematic mode. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that'll be a bit better. Anyway, I'm going to crack on to stains. I will, no, uh, Bootle, I keep getting confused. I'm going to crack on to Bootle. I will see you when we get there. I'll see you in a bit. Right, we are loaded. <clears throat> I've just got to go strap up now. So putting the gloves on and uh, going to strap all this lot up. Right, I'm just doing all the straps up now. We've got eight all in all. Yeah, eight straps all in all. Um, which is plenty, as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> I've had less on, and the load hasn't shifted. And the reason I've got eight on this load is because some of it overlaps some of the others. So uh, yeah, I've got an extra strap on. I think at some point this trailer's had some timber on with creosote on it because the trailer bed, particularly around this area, it's, well, it's dirty and it stinks of creosote. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it has. Right, that's this all strapped up. We're going to go sit in the truck now, wait for the paperwork. That's how much we weigh. So add another ton with me in it. <laughs> Yeah, cue the fat jokes. Um, so yeah, we're going to sit in the truck now, wait for the uh, paperwork to come, and uh, and then uh, we'll crack on to stains. I think we will make it today. ETA's half two, we're trying to get a break as well. Um, we're looking at like half three, so it's looking like we'll make it by four o'clock, so that's good. I think four o'clock is the car. Unless we get caught in traffic somewhere, who knows? The Essential New Truckers Handbook is a book aimed at new drivers who want to become part of the industry. This book will guide you through what to expect in the industry via its 28 chapters and will help you understand important rules and regulations such as driver's hours, loading and unloading, manoeuvring and much more. This book also contains DVSA revision theory test questions 
and is a great read should you wish to gain some extra knowledge. The Essential New Trucker's Handbook, updated and enlarged, available now. Link is in the description down below. Right, he is just coming over now. There we go, mate. Thank you very much. All right, have a good day. Paperwork is signed. That can go there. Engine on. Seatbelt on. Let's get a crack of lacking. Um. Yeah. So, um, if we're lucky, we can get down there without a break. But I think we are going to need one. I don't know. It depends. It depends on traffic, man. If traffic um, is kind to us, then we uh, we won't need one. Watch the car on the left. Watch on the right. Car left. On the right. Lovely. Yeah. So it's just a case of just seeing how far we can get. Oh, funeral. Rest in peace. Lorry's let me out. Thank you very much. The car can't go anywhere because I was on his side of the road. So thank you to the lorry driver. Um, yeah, so we're going to make our way down to Staines. Um, it's definitely going to be a night out tonight, that I do know. And, um, well, the reason being is because we're four hours and ten minutes away from where we need to be, and we've done three hours and fifty now, so that's literally eight hours. So by the time we get there, we'll be on eight hours driving. Your destination, Thank you. So that does mean um, that we've got uh, well, legally, we can do a 10 hour drive twice a week, so we do have two hours to play with, should we decide. Um, but other than that, normally it's just a nine hour shift. So I don't know, it depends, it depends on what we've got to do. If we are told back to the yard from there, unlikely, but if we are, then um, I might be able to get back to the yard on a 10 hour shift, 10 hour drive. It's unlikely that I'll be told to go back to the yard. It's also unlikely I'll make that on the 10 because I think I'm going to get caught in traffic somewhere. So. So we're not, we're not going to worry about being able to get back home or not. Let's just, on the assumption we are on a night out tonight, uh, we'll have about an hour to get somewhere from Staines. Now from Staines, I've been sent all sorts of places. I've been sent Tilbury Docks, I've been sent Sheerness Docks, I've been sent... Um, where else have I been sent? When are you trying to think? Um, where all those, I can't remember what it's called now, there's like ditches either side of you have been sent there as well. That's quite far away. So it, it, we could literally be sent anywhere from from Staines so there's not much point really thinking about it it just it is what it is and we will get done what we can get done and we will go where we are told to go that's what that's what it is I'm gonna go and I shall see you in a fair few hours time I'll see you in a bit bye bye right you remember what I was saying about we'll be all right as long as there's no traffic yeah this is us going very slowly on the M6. In fact, in fact, we might be coming to a standstill on the M6. It just says there's a, does it say, no, it just says caution at the moment, traffic, 40. It's not saying to move over or anything like that. By the way, I'm in lane three, yes, I know, you're allowed in lane three in a four lane motorway, and I've got vehicles on the left-hand side of me. I am trying to get over. Uh, I can see blue lights. There's a police car in lane four. Police car trying to get past. Now, if only there was a hard shoulder. Be able to go straight past them, wouldn't it? So yeah, something's happening on the M6. We're staying, we're staying behind in case anyone wants to get in this lane all of a sudden. I've, I've left it all clear in front of me so vehicles can move over. I, de <laughs> I deliberately left it clear in front of me so that all of them can move over, but no. What happened? Idiots. 
Anyway, yeah, something's happening up ahead. Now, the next thing is how many plonkers drive in lane four where there's a red X. All of these are, they've gone through it so far. Loads of them. Sort of, sort of stuck in lane now because I've got vehicles on, like on the left of me. Once you're in a lane, you might as well just stay in it. Slow traffic on M6 E5. Traffic no joke. Right, there's a car coming down now with orange beacons on. Well, you moved very late. Right, how many cars are going to go in this red X? Yeah, blue car, you're going to go in the red X. I hope you get a ticket, I really do. I've never wanted someone to get a ticket more. Especially considering you're following the emergency car now, all the way down. Absolute wally. Yes! We are definitely at a standstill. <laughs> Um, I've only been stationary for 30 seconds but 30 more seconds and I will turn the engine off I've just had a uh, phone call from Lena Trucker actually of all people and uh, good friends of Lena hello Lena if you're watching she's just passed me coming the other way and she said there's a two car pile up two cars have crashed and they're in what she called the fast lane what I call lane 4 <laughs> hence the red X yeah. Engine off, I think. Oh, this is just great, isn't it? Sitting in traffic like this as well is going to mean we're going to use up what little drive time we have left. Um, it, in one hit, it's like four hours and ten minutes. But obviously, when you're slowly going, you're losing time. So I think I am going to have to stop for a break on the way down now as well, which is going to put it very close to four o'clock. Very close. Right, we've been stationary for 10 minutes. Haven't moved for 10 minutes. The vehicles in lane 4 are going. Presumably because they want to clear the lane, but... It's going to go back miles, I know it is. It's idiots. I'll get the engine on, ready. I reckon, if anything, what they've done is they've moved the vehicles from the right over to the left and uh, maybe closed this lane now, lane one. I would have, I would have thought. I don't know. They've definitely stopped it. That police car that went past definitely stopped it to begin with. Anyway, I'm wearing these Ray-Ban Meta glasses. I'm not actually recording right now, but I have been just recording all the idiots in lane four going. <laughs> it could be open now, for all I know. I don't know. We're in between gantries, so... Admittedly, behind me, it might have, might have cleared, so we won't know until we get to the next gantry um, whether lane four is actually still closed or not. But, um, yeah, as of right now, we're not going to make it. We need to stop for a 45-minute break on the way down now. I've done an hour's driving, and sat down for saying we're three hours and 45 minutes away. Obviously, we can only do three and a half before we need a break. So we're 15 minutes over the driving time at the moment. Uh, but there is 23 minutes worth of traffic, so it might go down. Who knows? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Still got vehicles on the left. So the gantry is still saying lanes four shut. I can show you how these glasses work, actually. They're completely hands-free. Hey, Meta, start recording. Okay, that didn't actually work. Hey, Meta, start recording. Okay, now we're recording. Um, okay, we can actually get over to lane one now as well. So, um, yeah, lane four still shut. Car still in lane four. Blatant red X. Is the camera flashing? I think I saw the camera flash. I hope it is. I hope everyone in lane four is getting a ticket. Because that's just stupid. There's still cars in lane four. And now... This is the key thing. So now we've got a big red X on the big gantry overhead. Whereas that one just there was just one gantry on the left-hand side. Right, you join me. Um, 
four hours and 15 minutes later. Um, we are coming up. Well, actually, it's four hours and 15 minutes since we left Bootle. Not since you last saw me. Since we last left Bootle. Um, we have to stop for a break. We are not going to get there in one hit. Um, and it's the traffic. It's the M6. We got stuck on the M6 traffic. Not just where you saw it, but also elsewhere as well. A couple of places. It's messed us up. Um, we're about half an hour away and we're on four hours, 15 minutes. We're 15 minutes shy of driving time. Um, so by law, we have to stop for a 45 minute break. Have to. Now this is where it gets tricky because um, it's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. We have to stop for 45 minutes. And that puts it to quarter to four. We're half an hour away. That puts it to quarter past four. Cut off is four o'clock. We're 15 minutes too late. So, um, yeah, it's a tricky situation. We've got a choice. We've got to have a 45 either way, but we need to decide whether we're going to carry on or whether we're just going to park up for the night. Um, first, we need to actually have a space to park for the night. Right, now I'm going to go forward so someone can park in behind me. Jobs are good in. I don't think I've parked very straight. That's better. We're straight now. That'll do. Yes, I know. We need a break. So, um, yeah. Time for a break. Like I said, it's diff difficult. We're going to be there... 15.34 according to this, 45 minute break. It's gonna be like 25 past four. They're not gonna take a delivery at 25 past four. There's no way. By the time we get out of here as well, it's more gonna be like half past four. I mean, you can't just drive out, you've got to queue up to get out <laughs> Um So yeah, that's a delivery, that's a delivery for the morning. We'll have a 45 minute break and um, reevaluate, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's this is us for the night. Pretty sure, and then we'll um, I'll crack on in the morning, but um, probably won't see it in this video. But I'll let you know exactly what we're doing once we've had a break. Let's have a 45, I'll see you in a bit. All right, we're just uh, walking to the services, doing a bit of uh, cross country. <laughs> um, yeah, go to the toilet and whatnot, freshen up. Very surprised there's no uh, no trucks in here. Seventy five pound fixed penalty. Don't think I've actually been in these ones. Are you doing right, mate? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Yeah, busy always. <laughs> um, someone just recognised me. Yeah, as I say, I don't think I've actually been into these services before. Nando's. Sweet, we are back in the truck. Um, not gonna lie, I bought myself a KFC. <laughs> I went in, I was like, I'm not gonna buy any fast food, I'm not gonna buy any fast food. And I saw the fast food, I was like, I'm gonna buy some fast food. I'm supposed to be on a diet, I kind of regret buying it now, but what can I say? The wraps are really nice, so I bought myself a wrap. Um, it's in there, not gonna eat it just yet. Um, or should I? I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna go anywhere. I think this is it now for the day. Like, I feel bad because I'm sure my boss wanted it off today. Positively wanted it off today. And uh, if it wasn't for that traffic coming down on the M6, I would have been able to make it and um, get it tipped. And then I would have needed a 45 outside their gates, but still would have been able to make it and get it tipped off. Uh, have the break and then park up somewhere local. And then in the morning, first thing, drive to wherever I've got to go. Now, effectively, we're a load behind, so um, I'm sure it's upset my boss. I'm a little bit annoyed because I, I like to do as much as I can, and it's literally like 10, well, 20 minutes in it or something like that. That's what's causing the issue. Um, if we have the drive time, we can head straight there, but we don't have the drive time because of the traffic. Okay, I feel a little bit better now. I, <laughs> I messaged my boss at 12 o'clock this afternoon 
bearing in mind it's now half past three. So like over three and a half hours ago, I messaged him saying I don't think he's going to come off today and I had no response. So I was feeling a little bit like, like I literally just said, I think my boss is going to be upset. But he literally just replied back, literally just now saying, okay, mate. So maybe he's not so upset. I know it does say on the paperwork it's actually due for tomorrow you morning anyway. At your destination at 1611. I know it says um, it's actually due for tomorrow anyway. Um, but obviously, if you want to try and get off today, you, you know, that's what you want to try and do, isn't it? But as you just heard, 1611 if we left now, uh, we've still got to have another 15 minutes, so... That's going to be 16.27, something like that. So, yeah, nearly half an hour after the cut-off, so not a lot we can do about it. Good news is we're only half an hour away, so in the morning, I don't need to start until half six, something like that. I don't know what time they open. I think it's... I don't think they open much before seven o'clock, so... We get, up, we get up at, like, quarter past six, twenty past six, and then slowly make our way over. Get there for 7 a.m., get it tipped off first thing, and then crack on with the day. So, yeah, that's it for today's video. <laughs> like I said, it's just a little bit annoying. I like, I'm not one of these drivers who just like to park up earlier. I like to get on with it and do stuff. Um, I don't like sitting around, believe it or not. I like to get on with the day, get as much done as I can, and carry on. That being said, you know, it's gone half past three in the afternoon, which might sound like an early finish, but you've got to remember this morning. I was in the yard at that time, so it has been a 12-hour shift for me. Um, so it's not been a, a short day. It's not been a long day either. It's just like a normal 12-hour shift. But it would have been nice if I can get this off, but it is what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've had zero cinematic footage in this, so please do let me know if you've enjoyed it with, with zero cin cinematic. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be editing this video as well, so there's going to be nothing wrong with editing. Um, hopefully, because I'm going to be the one in charge of this one. And um, yeah, let me know what you think about the video quality. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm trying to get to 100k, and I'm trying to get there before Kev T, because <laughs> Kev T's overtaken me. Um, Kev T is. By the way, if you don't know who Kev T is, go check him out. Definitely, uh, just type in Kev T Salvage Hunting. Uh, he's a very, very good friend of mine, and um, for months, for years actually, he's been behind me in subscribers. And um, he's finally overtaken me, so my channel is dying. <laughs> um, someone said earlier that they've unsubscribed, so maybe that maybe that's true. I don't know, but I couldn't be happier for my friend uh, Kev T. So if you haven't followed him already, go and follow him. And if you haven't followed me, then give me a chance to subscribe as well. I really would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, drive safe, stay safe. I've been Luke C in my HTV, as you can see by the sign. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.